Hey YouTube, it's been a long time since my last video, over nine months in fact. I've been pretty busy, uh, I actually moved to San Francisco to work for Cisco and, and moved back, finishing up school now. Um, but I'll go over all that in a separate update video or something if you guys would like. But for this one, I got this sweet Dell R410 server that I picked up on eBay fairly recently. I've been thinking about getting a server for a long time though, something that I can kind of just put somewhere and let it run. Just run game servers, websites, whatever. Basically just for fun, maybe a pen testing in a virtual environment, who knows. And um, at work they have Dell R710s, and I was thinking of getting one of those guys. But they're big, they're 2U, so this is a 1U, um, so it's tw they're twice as tall and make lots of power. But I did a bunch of research, and I'm glad I did, because I found certain types of servers that you can get for a pretty good price. And again, this one is a Dell R410. Um, you can get them for about $200 off eBay. This one has two 6-core Xeons. They're hyper-threaded for 24 logical cores total. It's only got 16 gigs of RAM, but that's enough for the VMs I need to be running for now. I was hoping it would come with PC3L memory, but it's not. It's 1.5 volts, so it'll chew a little bit more power up, but that's okay with me. Specifically, the CPUs are Intel Xeon L5640s. Those are 2.26 gigahertz. I could have got, like... 2.9 something or 3 gigahertz CPUs, but I decided to go with the low voltage uh, CPUs so that I wouldn't be pulling quite as much power. And I actually found another one of these for $200 that had same CPUs but better. Again, these are 2.26s. I found ones with 2.93s, I think it was. Of course, like a few days after I bought this one, so it was straight up better CPUs. Again, I do kind of like the L5640s because they take up less power but it would be nice to have something more powerful. And also, I had 24 gigs of RAM instead of 16. That was lower voltage. So, um, of course, you got to find the really good deals after you already buy something. But this still is a really good deal, and I just thought I'd put a little bit of a mention towards it, because if you're looking for anything server-related, you can get rack mount servers specifically for pretty good prices online. Everybody wants to buy tower machines, but nobody really wants the rack mounts. And they make a little bit more, more noise, yeah, but... Um, it's a pretty sweet deal. So the reason I bought this was basically just to run some sort of, um, basically run ESXi off of and to have some VNs. I'm struggling way too much with that, so I'm just going to leave it for now. So I mentioned the CPUs and the RAM. Um, it's only got one power supply. A lot of these have dual power supplies, but you know what? I'm really not concerned about the power supply failing. That is not going to be an issue, I hope. It's got a built-in RAID controller, which is pretty nice. It does RAID 0 and 1. I think it also does 5, 6, and 10. And what's really funny is that where I bought this from on eBay, uh, they sell a lot of server hardware. They're very popular. I have a friend who's bought from them, too. And you can choose what hard drives you want with this specific, um, this specific model. And so I chose to get two 160s. They were 5 bucks a piece. Of course, these 160s are kind of garbage. I was hoping there would be a nice kind of 160, but it's the ST31608 15AS. I just recognize it because I've seen it so many times. Got a bunch of these Dell 760s or Optiplexes uh, that have the same exact kind of hard drive in them, and they're not super great. They got 8 megabyte caches, 7200 RPM, but they're generally pretty slow. But what I figured was, even if I didn't want the hard drives at all, which I don't really, um, it would still be a good deal to get them because the hard drives come with these caddies. And if you go to buy the caddies by themselves, they're six or seven dollars a piece. So I could get a hard drive for the caddy for five bucks or just the caddy for six or seven. So I decided to get the hard drives with it. And I had a couple one terabyte hard drives lying around it. So you know what? Might as well toss them in there. Uh, I think one of them might have block errors or just general issues, but. I made the RAID 1, it seems to be working okay for now. So basically I'm running the entire thing off of a hard disk RAID 1. That gives me like a couple hundred megs a second to read, which isn't too bad. Um, so yeah, it was pretty neat. It comes with Intel iDirect Enterprise, which I didn't actually know about when I bought it. It's one of those things where you learn about it after the fact, and it's really cool. I'll show you that in a little bit when I go to boot it up. Okay, so I basically just have it plugged into my desktop here. Um, there's only two things plugged into it, because that's all I really need. All I need is the power cable and then a network cable. Uh, it has two NICs built right in, but I have one, which is a trunk link that's like, allowed to talk on a couple different VLANs to my Cisco Meraki MS220. Uh, There's a little bit of a story as to how I got that. I worked for these guys, so they give you hardware, but 
can probably talk more to that in another video. So it comes in here and it's basically a trunk link that can access a few different VLANs. And of course, the management IPs for VMware and IDCrack are on one VLAN, and the VMs are on another, so they're completely segmented off and everything. But it's enough networking. Um, go ahead and power it on. It's not super loud, but not super quiet either. You know, um, I was hoping I could just leave it on 24/7, but the noise was just a little bit too annoying to want to deal with all day. So I just decided, meh, just power it on when I actually want to use it. And another nice feature of IDREC, mixed with Meraki dashboard, which I use for my Meraki devices, I can send Wake on land to this thing whenever I want. Uh, multiple ways, actually. So I can VPN into my laptop wherever, where, wherever I am and just power it on and start messing with the VMs and stuff. The reason why I don't need a display is because I just have this. This is Intel IDREC. It's just, um, it's basically a remote way of using remote desktop. It's built into the actual firmware on the motherboard, so you don't need to plug a display in. As long as you have proper network access and you have the passwords and everything to it, you can just get right in and do whatever you want. So I'm just going to let it boot up. Again, it's running ESXi, and I'll just show some details on that in a little bit. Okay, so here I'm in the ESXi console, and I uh, just got a few VMs loaded up here. Each got a decent amount of juice to them, like I got my Windows Server 2016 VM, I'm running a Rust server. It is the largest map you can possibly run right now, so it's chugging up quite a bit of memory, 6.3 gigs, basically just going to that process, but we're talking about 20% CPU usage, and that's 8 cores, which is one-third of the total performance of the server, so it's like this two-thirds of one of my CPUs, which is not a whole lot, and that's going pretty well. Um, and then I also got... Uh, an Ubuntu server running running a Gmod server and uh, obviously the server is not on all the time so this stuff isn't really reliably, reliably accessible but if I decide to run it all the time then I'll get it I'll post a domain name and have people join it and stuff if they want um, I have a Windows 10 VM just for Windows uh, sandboxing whatever I need it for sometimes my classes require me to just download fake malware or whatever so I'll use that for that and I got like another bunch of server that I might use as a web server for like a WordPress blog that I might host myself or something so um, but yeah I just thought I'd, I'd show some details to what I'm actually doing with it with this server rather than just saying oh yeah I have a server and this leaving at that uh, so I'm really happy with this thing you can actually get these things for like I said not a whole lot of money two hundred dollars is not a lot of money in the server world if you want to get something brand new you can get something you know twice as powerful for ten times the price. Uh, and, the, and again, the, the power consumption on these things isn't too bad. I figure it'd chew up about $100 a year, which eight to ten dollars a month really isn't that bad, especially if you're enough of a nerd like me that you like playing with this stuff a lot. So anyway, that's all for this video. I just thought I'd make a video on that. Pretty neat. Got more coming, so please do stay tuned.